So hello everybody, uh, here again with another uh, update on some of the things that are happening around the world and some of the things that should be important to you. Um, this video we're going to do it in English because we need to test out how the actual algorithm is going to do with the information that I'm going to be talking about and you know hopefully this goes well. So yesterday uh, I was on Twitter just surfing around a little bit and I noticed that there was a video being targeted by a couple accounts in regards to the Secretary of Def or Secretary of Defense speaking in front of the media about how the lack of support for Ukraine was going to cause the loss of American lives. Speaking more more in the sense of uh, how we would have to pay in blood for the actual. Um, inaction of our Congress and our um, democratically elected officials to not support the fight in Ukraine. And I thought it was a little interesting because now we are switching the rhetoric a little bit in the sense that not only we need to support unconditionally the nation of Ukraine, but now we're going to pay in blood if we do not do you know such actions. And I've never heard something so bizarre in the sense of thinking of American lives like they are basically, you know, a method of payment for the inaction within an agenda. And that to me is, it's, it's just mind boggling. It's just mind boggling. I don't understand how can we have gotten to this point and why we got to this point either. It makes no sense. Because this is not our world. This is not something that we started. It's not something that we have to support it unconditionally. Providing funding to the level that we're actually spending more in Ukraine than we are spending in our infrastructure in our country. And not more than that, we're not even trying to secure our border. That's another thing that I saw that was a, a very... I wouldn't say interesting, you know, chain of events. It, it really wasn't. It wasn't interesting. It was actually very, very scary. I look at the amount of people that are coming through our borders, and we're not talking about, you know, oh, no, they're coming here illegally. They're they're doing this or doing that. No, we, we understand that notion. Everybody does, at least everybody that's thinking and that's looking ahead of what's going in our country, we're looking at it. I see people talking about, you know, these people that are coming through the border are getting $5,000 in gift cards. I don't know how, how true that is. I haven't seen anybody, you know, with a receipt or anything like that. So I can't really say that is insane because we don't have any proof. At least I don't. The other thing that I saw is that we're not, not all of us, but some of us are not um, really looking at the nationality of the individuals that are coming through our border right now. And the other thing that I find extremely fascinating and that nobody within Homeland Security, FBI, any of the intelligence community agencies are looking at the H bracket for the individuals that are coming through the border. And if you know a little bit about terrorism and more so the way that the Middle East operates, you see that the fighting age for some of the Islamist extremists is 18 to 35 give or take and we see that the majority and I'm not going to give you a statistic because I don't know the actual number but just looking at their faces and if you have been in the Middle East for more than a day you can kind of pinpoint how the people look at a particular age bracket the majority of these people are within the fighting range and you go like, why is that important, Frankie? Well, that is important because within that particular age bracket, people are more susceptible within the Arab countries to become an extremist within an ideology. It could be from Egypt, from the Muslim Brotherhood. It could be from Hamas. It could be from, name it. Put the country, put the terrorist group, name it, and it's basically it. Why? Because they're at the point that they have to start looking for a way of 
making a living. They have to start supporting their families. They have to start going through all the notions and all the, the issues that they're going to go through within their life. And the best way to do it is to become a fighter within an extremist, extremist group. And this is very, very, very scary. Because if we want to go back to the point that we had, and we still, I would assume that we do, have sleeper cells in our country, all they have to get is a call to arms to start a chain of events that will more than likely go back to the potential, you know, attack in one of our, we're good, we can say gathering centers, we can say anywhere, Just it, it could equate to the attack on 9-11. It's a, po- a very, very, very strong possibility in my sincere opinion. Um, why are we not talking about this? I don't understand. I don't know. And I think that there is a lot of goodwill within the people of the United States of America to help others in need, but not at the expense of our society and our way of life. It is unfortunate that these countries are having the issues that they're having. It is very disheartening. And inherently, we have to sincerely look back and do some some soul searching, man, because this is just way too extreme. It's way too extreme in the way that you do not want to be at the butt end of this particular issue. And that's where we are. We are the ones that will lose if we have to deal with an attack from within and then we have to now according to the secretary of defense go outwards and uphold our title five duties when russia eventually if ukraine loses because we're not giving them money if apparently they lose then we will have to pick up the tab and start fighting abroad we're we're not going to be able to make it i know that People here will fight. People here will do the right thing and and continue to democratically elect the people that they feel that are going to be enforcing their best interests. But at the end of the day, how certain we are that we're picking the right people? We're not. We're not. And this kind of content is the kind of content that I want to bring to the table, to the X space, to YouTube, Facebook. TikTok, every platform, we're going to start actually engaging in this type of conversation. And we're going to have not a one-sided conversation. We're going to have a lot of people, just like you and me, people that work every single day, wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning or whatever time you wake up. I'm just saying what time I wake up. Go to work, do their job, go out there and get it, uphold their American values, uphold their family and the traditions of this country and hold this country dear dear to their heart because we love our way of life we love the ability that we have to be talking to you and to our friends and family in a way that we're not being oppressed and that's what we want to safeguard we all believe in the constitution of the united states we all believe in the safety and the security of our nation so why are we not doing something about it i exhort you to please if you like this kind of content follow comment uh give a thumbs up If you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. Let's have a conversation. I'm not the kind of individual that I do not accept criticism, even if it is negative, because criticism is caring. So criticize away, my friend. Really go for it. Um, Again, right now I'm, you know, doing these car these videos in my car because it's a time that I have right now that I have you know available to me. But in the future we're gonna have a more you know studio like setting. We're definitely going to have uh, our podcast you know, brought properly with very interesting topics. And if you could, and if you want to, again, leave in it, leave something in the comment. Tell me what do you want me to talk about? What do you think our perspective needs to be as a nation? We need to stop letting these politicians dictate what they feel that they want to do just because they want to put more money in their pockets, man. And I'm not saying it's every politician, but you can kind of see the, the, you know, the writing in the wall. So start speaking out. We got to start making our moves and, and putting ourselves in a position that as 
the next generation coming up being professionally uh, proficient and being able to hold these positions that need our attention so we can raise our kids the way that we want it. It's time to let grandma and grandpa get out of their chair and let us sit in it. This is, this is insane. We need to move forward and we're not doing it with these people. So thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll catch you in the next one.